Well hello everyone, welcome back to Pwn TV. And just like the title of this video, I want to show you guys uh, my favorite ammos in Final Fantasy XI. So I made a short list of 24 different ammunition, and in this video I'll just talk about why I have some of that ammunition. I'll try to limit all of the reasons for all of these descriptions of these 24 items to less than 30 seconds or so, so the video doesn't turn out to be more than 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but it is a long list, so I think we should get started started with it. So I have everything sorted from my least favorite to my most favorite at the bottom of this list. So uh, these are some of the things that as we go through this list you'll probably say, oh well I don't think I'll ever get that. And that's fine. If there's something on this list that you think is dumb or you don't think you need it, that's totally okay. I don't want you, I don't want to live your life for you. This is just what I've learned as, you know, playing Final Fantasy XI on all jobs. I've learned that these are really good items. So let's get into it. Puppet Master just automatically has this Automaton Oil Plus 3 in their ammunition slot. So of course I play a level 99 Pup, that is item level 119. I want the best stuff so I can actually be a decent Puppet Master. And so when I'm playing Puppet Master, I'm definitely putting on Automaton Oils. Do I use it that often? No, not really. But uh, do I think I need it for everything I bring Pup to? Yes, of course. Similarly, Pet Food Theta for Beastmaster. This is the best we have right now as far as I know, and it's the best I think I need when I play Beastmaster. At least that's the truth. Uh, so I blink into this when I want to uh, use a reward on my, uh, on my pet, and that's the only reason I have it. Do I use these at all? Very, very rarely. Uh, considering I have probably a hundred of them in my mod case somewhere, I don't use that many. But I used to, so that's why I have them. And they're kind of a pain in the ass to get to the place to grab more of them, so I just like to carry them on me so I don't have to worry about that. And yeah, so that's just as simple as that. Other things that I think are good for Beastmaster, there's a short list of Beastmaster items here, so we'll just briefly talk about why each of them, why I have each of them, why they might be good. Demon Record, this just happens to be the strongest uh, pet buff that you have for the ammo slot for Beastmaster. So when I play Beastmaster, I just bring this, even though the accuracy plus four is like never relevant. I still think, why not? So that's the only reason I have it. Okay couple of jugs that I want to talk about on Beastmaster. There are more than two jugs in this game, so if you play Beastmaster, you're probably sad you don't see your favorite jug. I'm sorry. Leave a comment. I would be happy to tell you why I don't have that particular jug. Uh, every Beastmaster plays the job a little bit differently, right? And in my case, I... I have a magic attack and I have a physical attack. That's all I really have space for, considering I play all 22 jobs in this game. I don't want to dedicate that much space. So as you can see, I really only have like four things on Beastmaster that I need to pull out of my mod case when I bring my Beastmaster someplace. So I'm not really that worried, right? It's very li like very few things that I need to. Actually, there's a couple of axes that I need to grab when I use Beastmaster as well. But we're just talking about ammo. So if I find myself in some content where the boss is not weak to physical damage, perfect example, you do Einerger, you get to the last floor of Einerger, I think I'm saying Einerger, right, where you fight Odin and there's all those nine chambers, and Odin's the very last chamber below the ninth one, so the tenth chamber is Odin, Odin's chamber. Einerger, that content, um, really, really important to grind that when you're developing mythic weapons, and I've made four mythic weapons at this point, I'm pretty sure, if, if, unless I've lost count. And every time I grind Einerger, there are times where I know Beastmaster's really good, and I want to bring it, but I, I run into a situation where the end boss spawns, and he happens to be uh, not weak to physical damage. There is one of the particular bosses, and he's just not weak to physical damage at all. He actually develops a really strong physical resistance to, to physical damage. Uh, and that's bad, and you can time out. You usually think it's going to be an open and shut situation when you walk into Einerger on Beastmaster or Blue Mage. Well, in this case, if it's Beastmaster you chose to walk into Einerger on because you think that's the easiest way to grind Einerger, which I think it is, it's next to Blue, it's what I would bring, you run into that boss, you need this, or you lose. That's just how it goes, honestly. Um, he needs to take magic damage. Some content is like that. Zabulous Broth has Attentive Ibuki. When you summon Attentive Ibuki, it is a Tolfair type mob. It has three moves. One of them is a one cost, and one of them is a two cost, and the third one is a three cost. The one cost move is a magic wind elemental cone damage, and that shits on bosses that are strong against physical damage easily because it's just magic elemental cone damage. 
and that's the only reason I have it. So I just, just I never leave home without it because I never know if I'll find myself on Beastmaster doing some content that just is not weak to physical damage, and I just simply auto lose. This is just my oh shit button, really, for for Beast. And speaking of things that I would bring on Beast, this is the item I like to bring for Beastmaster for physical damage: Bouncing Bertha. Bubbly Broth Jug gives me Bouncing Bertha. Bouncing Bertha is a high quality version of Scissor Leg Saren, which is a the, uh, is a grasshopper type monster, and he has two, or she has two uh, moves. One of them costs, I believe, two, and the other one costs, I want to say, two or three. I, I don't. Rem I think they're both two. It's some whatever it is. There's a cone attack that he has that's physical, and there is an area of effect attack that he has that is physical. And if you gear for it, you can do 20, 40, maybe even more than 40,000 damage to everything in the area. Like, area of effect 40k spam physical damage, like that, because you can just spam this with Unleash easily. That kills shit. It just kills shit. It's Summoner Burn, basically. But this is physical, uh, whereas, you know, Summoner... You know, they might be physical, they might not be, whatever. This is just physical, though. If you bring in Beastmaster and you want to spam magic, you have to have the oh shit button, which we talked about, the Salubrious Broth. Okay, and that's it for pet jobs on this list. Everything else on this list is fresh, interesting pieces of gear that are not related to pet jobs, and they're just really good for random ass shit. Going down the list, Light Satchet. I've thrown away probably 50, 60 of these in my day, uh, but honestly... I got it back when Kate Sith was released because he likes to spam holy damage to you, and holy damage is light, and there are times where I just simply die to that, so why not get lucky, have a light satchet equipped, and not simply die to that? Like, just ignore it and laugh at everyone who did die to it because you went out of your way to go to Abyssey and get the uh, level 90 light satchet piece back. So that's why I have it. It takes an inventory spot out of my mod case because. If I find myself doing Kate Sith, this is a really good item to bring for like the stupid, ridiculous holy damage that he wants to do. Similar random ass shit that's only situationally good in niche situations, and that is Barathrum going down this list a bit farther. The stats on here are kind of meh. You probably wouldn't get this for anything. Note, this was really tricky to get for me because it required a lot of luck and a lot of grinding and a lot of prerequisites. I'm talking about if you don't already have all of the, um, what is it, the four seals that you need to get these bosses to spawn to Esher Ruan because it's a lottery pop in Esher Ruan. If you don't have those, you're not getting this. <laughs> You might as well buy this in that case, but should you buy it if you can't get it yourself? Yes, and I'll tell you why. In, Am in Ambuscade, every player that does Ambuscade likes to grind hallmarks on every of their accounts every single month. That's just what you do to make money. That's what you do to gear your guys. Ambuscade, every month. There is a month that has Tonberries. Tonberries have damage based on your Tomberry hate. How do you stop them from auto-killing you in that particular Tomberry month, in that particular Ambuscade month? You reset your Tomberry hate. How do you reset your Tomberry hate? You have to do a quest that requires you to turn in gold beast coins. Now, how many gold beast coins do you have on you at the moment? Probably none. How many gold beast coins would you reckon are on the auction house <laughs> During that month, when everyone is buying them to do the quest and reset their Tomberry hate. Uh, none. You're not getting any gold beast coins, and they are expensive during that month because they are, it's supply and demand. It's as simple as that. No one has time to go farm gold beast coins, and if you don't already have a stack on you that you're just waiting for Tomberry month, then you need to get them. So that's where this comes in. Barathrum helps you steal gold beast coins during Tonberry month. That's all it does. The only reason you get this is if you need the gold beast coins or you want to sell the server a bunch of gold beast coins. That's the only time you get this. And that's why I have it. Because every single time every month when the server runs out of gold beast coins and everybody wants gold beast coins, I have... I'm the guy with the supply. I have all the gold beast coins you'll ever want because I have a set of gear that steals more gold 
Beast Coins than all the other thieves. And this is part of it. That's why I have it. Now, we gotta really kick it into high gear talking about the rest of this stuff, because that took a long time. Decimating Bullet. This is your go-to oh shit button when your Rima weapon is on cooldown and can't dispense more bullets and you happen to be out of bullets. That's the only reason I have this. I put it in when I run out of bullets. It's just my backup bullet. Sapiens Orb. Multi-purpose, all jobs. If you want the Emity, you got it. If you want the fast cast, you got it. Both of those are relevant. Best in slot for both of those right here on Sapiens Orb. Grab it. It's easy to get. AMR Cluster or MR Cluster, however you say it. I think it's AMR. Lots of stats. All jobs. You find yourself needing any of these stats or being short and short supply of these stats. There you go. This is multi-purpose and it's all jobs. Great. Easy to get. Grab this. It's one inventory space. I'm never dropping mine. Seething Bomblet plus one. This was a bit tricky to get because I had to get the 50 trophies to upgrade it because the boss wouldn't drop the high quality one. So I got the normal quality one and I kept grinding it and I kept grinding it. And why did I do that? Why did I spend all day doing that? Magic attack bonus plus seven on Thief. I'm a Thief main. I need my Aeolian Edge to one-shot everything. So Aeolian Edge is area of effect wind elemental damage. Best in slot for that, Seething Bomblet, plus one. I, that's the only reason I have it. Lots of other great stats, lots of other reasons I could list why you would want this item. It's right there, but it's not easy to get, and it's situationally good. In my case, Alien Edge. <laughs> that's basically it. I don't even really play any of the other jobs. I don't need the magic attack bonus for like my lunge or whatever on, on Rune Fencer. No, just Alien Edge. <laughs> I want the best Alien Edge set, damn it. <laughs> and this is part of it. Yeah, Shilla. Okay, not high quality. That's kind of depressing, right? Boo! Thumbs down on the video. It's not high quality. Does it need to be? I mean, no, not really, because it doesn't even need to be here. I mean, I don't even need to have this item. But there are things in this game, like the Ambuscade Pulse Knuckles, for example, which I happen to have, uh, that say if you hit a crit, then you get extra store TP off of that. Um, that's great. So I need gear that helps me max out my critical hit rate, and this is best in slot for some jobs. Obviously, the high-quality one would be better, but it's unrealistically overpriced. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is what I have, and I think it's good for that particular reason. Staunch Tathlum, another thing that I personally will high-quality one day. Uh, I'd love to have a signed high-quality one, but it's on the back burner at the moment. I've got a lot of other things to spend my gill on, and I am broke at the moment. Uh, but this is a great item, uh, high quality or normal quality. They are fantastic items. The stats on here are so good for so many different situational things for all jobs. You get one of these, like if you don't have it, uh, you, you, what are you doing? Get a staunch Tathlum. There's so many ways you can build your gear around this particular item once you acquire it. And once you acquire the high quality one, there's so many other different ways to build your gear around it to reach the damage taken minus 50 cap, whatever it is, uh, and all that. Great. Just get it. Get it. It's great. Easy to get. A couple mil on the auction house and you're good. That's At least that's what it should always be. If it's much more than that, that's stupid. Okay, Sanka Satchet plus one. This is the end-all, be-all summoner piece for ammo slot. If you're playing summoner, you're a Nirvana summoner, you have to have this. If you don't have this, you have to have Sanka Satchet, uh, normal quality. If you have anything other than those two items, you're not going to get a party. Like, period. Like, if I need a summoner to do conduit, you have to have Sanka Satchet. There's a lot of stats on this gear. Uh, there might be other pieces of gear coming out in the future. I don't control that, but for the time being, this is insane and best in slot for a summoner, especially if you have Nirvana, and especially if you're just going to Astral Conduit shit. You just got to have this. Grab it. <laughs> Definitely spend the gill on this, if you play summoner, of course. Knob Carry. This is slightly more important than Sanka Satchet. I mean, not really. Like, technically, technically it should be like... <laughs> I think it's actually a bit more important than knob carry. <laughs> but uh, knob carry is good, guys. Knob carry is good. It is it is a brilliant item for that slot. To have weapon skill 6 on it is a really high value for any slot, including that one. Attack 23 is unheard of for most slots, and this item happens to have both. Uh, so for those 6 jobs, if you need the damage spike and you just want to get that extra 6% in, uh, and it's slightly more because the extra attack plus 23, then do it grab this but in general i mean it's overrated like you don't need this to win any content in final fantasy 11 like not nothing like 
it's tank is actually plus one you need <laughs> you need this to win content but knob is just a win more uh, in my opinion it's just a little bit of a win more uh, and so if you play those jobs and you want to max them out then you grab it otherwise wait for later Homiliary. This is another item that most people, I mean, this is an easy item to get. Most people overlook this, but once they see it, they're like, wow, that is insane. Why don't I have that item? And that's a good question. It only takes 30 minutes to do all three of the quests to get this item. I know because I just did it. <laughs> I just did it. Every time I looked at this item over 15 years, well, however many years it's been out, like five, six, whatever. Uh, over all those years, I've been looking at people with Homiliary. I'm like, huh, that's cute. Do I care? And it's mostly white mages. They'll, I, they'll AFK in this. I'm like, huh, I don't play white mage. I don't need this. But it, I mean, I do play Scholar. I do play Red, pl Paladin, Rune. I play these jobs. I mean, they don't care about that slot. They don't have anything locked into that slot. So why not have Homiliary? Like, that's just, that's a good question. So I, I have it. I made room for it finally. I have the room for it, and I'm going to have it. And it's just always going to be on me because it is really good. It's just, uh, it's a win more in some situations. If you have refresh in other gear slots, you don't even need this plus one. But if you don't, if you're just trying, if you're just starting to build your refresh set, this puts a dent in it. And you should start putting that dent in your refresh set because refresh sets are really strong. They help you win content that you would otherwise not win. Period. Regal Gem. This, honestly, probably less important than Homiliary. But uh, if you play Red Mage, you're like, this is an insane accessory. And it is. If you play Red Mage, eventually, you're going to get yourself a Regal Gem. Before you get a Regal Gem, uh, it doesn't matter, though. Before you get Regal Gem... Where, where did Regal Gem go? Before you get this Regal Gem here, it doesn't matter. Because by the time you get to the point in your game development where are your character development where you need these stats you already have a lot of these stats on your other slots so it's not that exciting when you finally get regal gem i was slightly excited when i got mine but having tested it with and without it it's never relevant this is never relevant like red mage is that insane they don't care about regal gem pimfredo taslam all jobs magic attack four i mean i'm using it this is second best in slot for Aeolian Edge, fun fact. So for all jobs, if you have if you're tight on inventory and you still want to pimp out like let's say your weapon your Aeolian well, Aeolian Edge weapon skill, then this is second best, but it's just not magic attack bonus plus seven like we saw Seething Bomblet. Uh, so and and for that reason I would use Seething Bomblet over Pimfredo Tathlum. But for everything else that requires magic attack bonus, that Seething bom Bomblet doesn't have those particular jobs on it to use it, then you get your, you've got Pimfredo Tathlum. It's not that hard to get. Once you have it, it's insane because magic accuracy eight all jobs for an ammo slot that's unheard of. That is fucking insane. Conserve MP4 on that slot? Ditto. Like, the stats on this are really up there, and so that's why I think everyone needs this item. All jobs, really high, all these different stats. So many different things I can think of that bust this, like, use this item and make themselves a busted ass job. Scholar is a really good example. <laughs> Scholar definitely needs Pimfredo Tathlum, and probably Amulary, actually. Okay. Going down the list, take a moment to laugh at me for having an egoist Tathlum, and then I'll laugh at you when you blink out of your 4,000 max HP set into your 3,000 max HP set, and then back again, and wonder why your trusts are out of mana, because they wasted all those cure spells, curing you unnecessarily. That's one example. I could give so many more examples. HP plus 45 happens to be best in slot for all five of those jobs for that slot and if you don't need that slot for what you're doing and you're blinking in and out of other equipment if this slot doesn't matter for what you're doing when you blink then you put this particular gear in that particular set because that will help you uh, change the HP values in such a way where you blink back and forth and you don't lose a thousand HP you lose 45 less than a thousand in this case but in most cases you've considered this and you've built an hp set and when you blink into other sets of gear you check your hp totals uh, if you're trying to build a set of gear that has that problem this is a really good first step there are other slots like there's a really good belt called orneros belt but this video is not about orneros belt right or whatever this video is not about that. It's about ammo, and this is why I have this item. I blink into Egoist Tathlum 
so many times it's ridiculous like and i don't necessarily think i need to in most cases now that i have it and i use it all the time i feel like i take it for granted but i'm telling you before i got it i was losing so much content because of this problem not having the extra hp when i blink into a weapon skill set or something like that so if you're maximizing some of your sets and you find that your ammo slot is not relevant for that particular set of gear, Ego Astathum, like I said, is your go-to piece. And I'm very excited about Ego Astathum, so I took more time than I probably should have talking about how good that HP 45 is. I really hope we get a level 99 piece, right? With like HP 100 would be pretty lit. All jobs would be insane, right? That's what I want. But uh, for now, this is what we have. I mean, don't tell me that we won't get HP 45, uh, HP 100 on, on ammo slot because we have Moonbeam Cape, all jobs HP 275. That's insane for our cape slot. That's fucking unheard of. Like, don't even tell me that it would be busted if the ammo did that. Come on now. But for now, HP 45. Now, we're getting really close to the bottom of this list. These last few pieces of gear are not just situationally good, but situationally busted good. Like, honestly, like, these are the things where if you have them and you do stuff, like, when you do the stuff that you're you're doing, it's, you did, you did stuff. And stuff happened, and people are probably not, not sure how you did what you did. Like, oh, I just arised you. Oh, I just arised to that other guy. Oh, I'm arising a third guy. I'm doing these all back to back and I'm not chain spelling. How am I doing this? I have occasionally quick in spell casting capped out at 10 and that's because the ammo slot is the plus two on the impassions right here. That's insane. Quick magic plus 10 is your cap in this game, and when you land a quick magic on things that have a really long recast that are super important, like raise 3, arise, uh, re-raise 3, like all these things have a really long cooldown and you just BAM, you're done with the spell casting. If you're playing in a PvP situation, it's even worse, right? Because, oh, I mean, the only way you have to kill him before he kills you is if you can instantly cast your spell. There you go! <laughs> there it is! Okay, so Impassions is insane. Everyone should get this item. It's one inventory spot for a lot of good stuff. And you should max out your, your Quick Magic plus 10 set as well. That requires things like Perry Mead Cape, which I think is a, uh, I think it's a drop-off of... Uh, the paste from Reason Jima. Uh, what's his name? Ah, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, moving on. Genshin. This is an annoying item to farm. So if you can just buy this from a player who wants to spend the time farming it, I would recommend that. Do you need this? Definitely. This is a definite, definite, definite necessity for all of those jobs. And you're playing one of those jobs or you're doing it wrong. Okay? So you need Genshin. Genshin is great. Genshin is best in slot three different times for like all this random shit that you probably before you had Genshin you're like why didn't I have Genshin earlier like that's what you say and then you get Genshin and you smile and that's how it goes and everyone else is jealous and that's because it's an insane piece of gear and it's annoying to get so once you get it that's great um, I, I like to sell these to, to players that are coming back to the game and they want cheap gear I'll go out and I'll delivery box myself my Genshin and I'll go out and try to farm another one for a guy I'm really good at it because I do it all the time that's one of the things I like to do in my free time in this game, farming merit point BCNMs, and Genshin is a merit point BCNM job, so... Yeah, by the way, if anyone needs any merit point BCNM gear drops, I'm the guy to talk to. I do it all the time. Genshin is no exception. Okay, but there, there's there's another one that I don't like doing. If it's OU, I don't want to do it. Don't, don't ask me for OU drops. I hate OU. He's so annoying. Now, Yammerang. Is it better than Genshin? No, it's just not. I mean, it looks better than Genshin. Like, you look at the accuracy on Genshin, accuracy 5. You look at the accuracy on Yammering, accuracy 15. You look at the attack on Genshin, attack 10. You look over here, no attack. Well, that's sad. You look at the store TP on Genshin, store TP 3. You look at the Yammering, store TP 3. Honestly, Yammering is Genshin in disguise. It's just slightly better than Genshin. It doesn't even need to exist, honestly. But... You know, they just decided, for whatever reason, hey, let's just make a specific Genshin that's geared towards only a fraction of the jobs on Genshin, and let's make it a slightly better, and so those jobs can be slightly better than the Genshin players. Like, that's all that this is doing. Yammerang, that's all Yammerang does. But in addition to what it's doing with the Genshin, being a better Genshin, a Genshin plus one, if you will, 
It's also giving you magic accuracy on those particular four jobs, and that is why I think it's better than Genshin. That's the only reason I think it's better than Genshin. You AFK in this, magic evasion 15, Genshin doesn't have that. So for idling, Yammerang is better. You, you, you want to actually land a spell? Maybe you're subbing Red Mage and you want to land a Silence? You can do that with gear like this if you have enough of it. Yammerang is best in slot for magic accuracy for those four jobs, for ammo, period. So you should get it. But should you pay a whole arm and a leg for it? No, probably not. It's not going to be as relevant for most of your content, just a little bit of your content. Okay, we're almost done with the list, but these last couple are going to take a few minutes. So if we're going on 20 minutes, I'm sorry, but I'm going to still talk about these because Beryllium Arrow, ever since the Ambuscade Pulse Weapons came out and we got the Ambuscade Bow for basically all those same jobs, Beryllium Arrow is just best for those jobs that are using the Ambuscade bow, and so that's why I have it. And that bow is really good. Really good bow! And you can just simply ranged attack on all those jobs, including Thief. So, let's say I'm going to Dynamis, let's say I want to bring my Thief so I land Treasure Hunter 8 on everything, and maybe even higher than that, but let's say we do the boss, the mid-boss, uh, which is the Wave 1 boss, it's a statue. Let's say I didn't sub ninjas so I don't have lots of Simi shadows, and so the statue will kill me with Seismostomp. Well, no it won't, because ranged attack set! I have it, thank you very much, and I have a bow to use, and a decent arrow to use, and I'm gonna do some damage from ranged attack after I apply TH. I'm not gonna be completely dead weight, period. Like, that's why it's good because it makes you not dead weight in a ranged attack situation, and that's why it's my second best favorite ammo in the game. Because I happen to be a thief main, right? Favorite ammo in the game. Expeditious, or expeditious, pinion. This item is what I use, on thief anyway, more than any other ammo in the game. That's why it's my favorite, because I think it's best for thief. Uh, it's There's a lot of jobs on it, uh, that can use it. It's kind of okay for those jobs, for a lot of the stuff those jobs are doing, sure. But why is it really good on Thief? Because if you're a Master Thief, and you don't need accuracy, and you don't need magic accuracy, or anything that Yammerang has, and you don't need anything that Genshin has, and you're not range attacking, so you don't need Borrelia Marrow equipped, you don't care about your HP, so you don't know you don't need your egoist. You see what I'm saying? When you're at that point where all of these other items for what you're pr doing in particular are not even best in slot as far as you're concerned, which that's how I feel, Expeditious Pinion has the Subtle Blow 7 on it. So you're probably thinking, oh, I think it's great because it's got Dex and Agility. Oh, huh, that's a joke. I mean, I have plus three gear and I'm Master Thief. I don't care about Dex 4, Agility 4. That's great. Thumbs up. Sure, two thumbs up. But Subtle Blow 7 is best in slot, and that's an insanely high value. So for level 99 gear, that's an insanely high value to stack. And if you could stack a Subtle Blow set and get to your Subtle Blow 50, which is, I believe, the cap, then this is a really good dent that you're putting in your Subtle Blow set. And why is that important? Because if you're just trying to raise Treasure Hunter from 8 to 14, and that's your job, this is what you have to use. Because if you're not using this, you're just hurting the Alliance. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Think about that for a little while, and come back to me with a comment, and let me know what you think about my list, which, by the way, we have finally got to the end of. Thanks for watching my video on my favorite accessories in Final Fantasy XI, and let me know in the comments if you think I should do something in the future with another slot. I would be more than happy to put together a reasonably short list and come up with a decent video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.